Hey team, we're going to learn how to boost performance in Next.js with automatically optimized images, responsive sizing, and using AI to dynamically crop and resize with Next Cloudinary. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for more web dev content. Next.js is by far the most popular React framework currently on the web. And while it comes out of the box with the Next image component, some of the features are a bit more limited to what you get with some of the modern solutions like using Cloudinary, where not only do we get more powerful automatic optimizations, we get transformations where we can do things like that AI-based dynamic cropping and resizing, as well as background removal, filters, AI-based tagging, and a ton of other awesome features. So we're going to use Next Cloudinary that allows us to take advantage of a lot of those features right with a simple component. So to test this out, I created a basic starter that we're going to use as a starting point so you can follow along. If we look at the preview, it's just really a gallery of images so we can kind of see how this is going to work in practice. If you want to follow along, you can find this link in the description, but I'm going to scroll down where we can see yarn create next app or NPX if you prefer, but I'm going to copy this line and paste it in my terminal where I'm also going to add my image gallery where what it's going to do is it's going to clone down this Next.js project that I created. It's going to install all the dependencies and it's even going to reset Git history to give us a starting point where once it's finished, I can now navigate into my image gallery if I can actually spell it right. And then once I'm inside, I can run yarn dev, which is going to submit up a local development server. And I can open that up now inside of my browser. And once it loads, we can see that exact same page that we saw before that was actually deployed. Now, if these images were a little bit slow to load, it's because they're huge. And some of that was a little bit intentional where I just took these images straight from Unsplashed and dumped them on the page, much like a content editor or something might do if they don't know how to optimize images. But we can see that once they're through the app, they're still huge. And we're gonna be able to see how we can further optimize these images, not only by optimizing the image itself, by resizing it, serving responsive images to make sure that we're only delivering what we need to the browser. Now I'm gonna take a quick screenshot so that we can actually see what this network request sizes looks like before we do our optimization. But now let's get started with Next Cloudinary. Now, of course, to use Cloudinary, you're going to need a free Cloudinary account. So head over to cloudinary.com where you can easily sign up for free. But once you're logged in, you can navigate over to your dashboard where we'll see our account credentials, which we'll use in a second to configure our account. But now back to Next Cloudinary, we're going to install it by running yarn add Next Cloudinary or NPM if you prefer. So I'm going to paste that in my terminal and I'm going to run that command. And before I spin up my development server, I have one more thing to do and add an environment variable. So once I have my project open up, in the root of the project, I'm gonna create a new file and call that .env.local, where inside I'm gonna copy this next public Cloudinary cloud name environment variable, paste it inside of .env.local, but then I wanna grab my cloud name from inside of my Cloudinary dashboard and paste that as the value for that environment variable. But now I can spin back up my development server and at this point, nothing should be different, but now let's use Next Cloudinary. So back in my code, I'm gonna to navigate to source, pages, and then index.js, where at the very top of that file, instead of importing image from next image, I'm going to import a destructured CLD image from Next Cloudinary. Now, once I have that imported, I can scroll down through my file and find every instance of that image and simply replace it with CLD image. And the nice thing is it's a drop in replacement for the image component. That way you don't have to change any of the props and it's going to have the similar experience that you would expect from the image component. Now, if you refresh the page, you might notice that all the images are now broken. By default, this source prop is actually going to want to reference a public ID or Cloudinary URL. And the point is that we want to be serving these images from our Cloudinary media library. But we can also use the fetch API, which allows us to pass in remote image sources, such as from another CDN, or if you want to move it from your existing site. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to add a delivery type of fetch to use the fetch API. And you want to make sure that you're going to add this on every instance of CLD image so that you're configuring all of them to do that for those remote URLs. But once we reload the browser, we'll start to see a few things where first of all, we can now see that these images are being delivered from Cloudinary. They're also being served as a type of AVIF instead of WebP. And if you look close enough, you'll be able to see that they have reduced sizes. But we can also see that we have a reduced transfer where we were originally doing, or right now we're doing 6.7 out of 10.5 megabytes, where previously, if we look at the screenshot, we were doing 9.5 out of 12.8. So we shaved off two to three megabytes already by just delivering them as AVIF automatically. 
But let's take this a step further, where if we start to inspect these images, we can see that we don't really have a lot of image variations here for the different sizing, where we have a 1x and we have a 2x, but let's actually serve them responsibly so that they're going to only deliver the size needed for that particular space. Now, when configuring responsive sizing, it's going to use the same API that you actually use for the Next.js image component, where we're going to define the sizes and exactly what we want for that particular image. Now I'm gonna paste this prop in, but if we start to look at it and see what's happening, if we have a minimum width of 480 pixels, we're gonna serve it 50 VW. So we're gonna basically just look at half where we have a min width of 728. We're gonna see that it's roughly three columns and then four columns, but if it's below 480, it's gonna be full width. But we can see how that is in practice where we have the one, two, three, four different columns depending on the size of the browser and how we can deliver the images. Now this probably isn't the most perfect responsive sizing, but it's going to be able to show us how this is actually working. Now, just as a reminder, though, we want to make sure we copy and paste this to all the other CLD image instances. But once we reload the page and we inspect one of these images, first of all, we're going to see the responsive sizing on there where we have a whole lot of different sizes actually happening. If we look back at the network tab, we can see that we reduce this even further where now we're delivering 543 kilobytes out of that 4.4 megabytes. So we slim that down way more than it originally was just by only serving the size we need for the particular viewport. To see how this works, if we start to look at some of these URLs for what's actually happening, we're here, I copied all the size attribute URLs inside of this file so we can actually see what's going on for the URL. But right here, if we look at this, we have our Cloudner URL where we're defining the image that we're actually grabbing, but more importantly, we're defining transformations like our F auto and Q auto, which are for optimizations, where F auto is gonna give you that format automatically, so the AVIF, where Q auto is gonna automatically compress it to a point that's not gonna distort the image. But what we're actually looking at here for responsive images is our C scale with our width attribute, which is going to differ between all these URLs. So just to see what that looks like, let's get rid of the same thing from all these URLs where I'm gonna copy from this 5184, which is the original image size. But now we can see going down the list, we have the 256, 384, 640, and that's the what only thing that's actually changing from all the URLs to give those responsive sizing. So it's happening on the fly by just changing this little URL parameter. But what that ultimately equates to is only delivering the image size that we need for the viewport. Now, again, let's take this a step further, where if we kind of scroll down through here, we have a lot of images in a lot of different aspect ratios, where if we start at the top, we have a really tall image, we have our wide images, and we might even see a square image if we look hard enough. Yep, we have one of them here. So they're all different aspect ratios. So it looks a little bit janky where we have a lot of big white space, and it's just not a really nice visually pleasing way to show all these images. So to fix this, we can use our dynamic cropping where all we need to do is specify a few attributes, including a crop type and the gravity of auto, which technically actually comes out of the box, where then once we specify the size that we want it, it's automatically going to give us this AI-based cropping. So to show how this works for example sake, I'm gonna set the width and height of both of these to 1200, and I'm gonna also set that crop of thumb or thumbnail. Where, like I said, we can specify a gravity of auto, but technically it automatically will get added. Where now, if we look back through our images, we can see that not only are they nice and square, we can see that they were automatically cropped using AI by the subject that's actually in the image. Now contrast that to the default gravity that gets set of center, and we can see that we get a different look with this, which is more apparent in this moon here, where we can see it's no longer centered. But if we flip back on gravity of auto, we can see that we go back to that nice and centered moon. You can also play around with this using the standard compass directions, which is how you can specify the gravity or the anchor point or focal point of the image, such as south, east, which doesn't automatically take into consideration the subject of the image, but if you're doing specific cropping, maybe that's exactly what you want for your use case. But taking a step back and looking at everything we did, including the automatic optimization, the responsive sizing, and the dynamic cropping and resizing, we can see that we dramatically reduced the request size, where if we look back at that screenshot, we were originally at 9.5 out of 12.8, but now we're 577 kilobytes out of that 4.4 megabytes. That's a dramatic reduction. Now really these features are only scratching the surface of what's actually available with Nextcloudinary where we can do things like background removal, we can create automated GIFs using zoom and pan and a ton of other filters and effects that makes it easy for working with images on the web. You can even dynamically generate social media cards super easily by using the CLD OG image component which has a similar API to CLD image. 
Next.js itself is a powerful machine for being able to create performance experiences for the web. And being able to use Next Cloudinary helps us level that up by giving us a lot of tools for how we can develop that experience for our images. After you give Next Cloudinary a spin, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think it's missing any Cloudinary features or anything else you'd like to see for using images on the web? If you want to learn more about some of the cool features that Cloudinary has out of the box, which Next Cloudinary actually supports, check out my video Webcam Photo Filters and Effects in React with Cloudinary. Or if you want to learn how to set up a serverless function so when you're uploading your images to Cloudinary, you can use Google auto tagging to automatically tag all of your images, check out my video AI image recognition for auto tagging with Google Vision AI and Cloudinary. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for more web dev content. Thanks for watching.